G'day, it's Ken Colson here from Creation Unfolding, and today I'm going to talk about a geologic process that clearly shows that things in the past were very, very different from things in the present and really show a clearly non uniform trend. That volcanic activity over the past supposed 500 million years does not accord well with uniform materialism or actualism. Here is a graph of volcanic activity from the Cambrian all the way to the present. The y-axis represents the volume of material ejected from any single eruption, and the x-axis uh, represents time in millions of years. Now, in total, there are close to about 200 data points on this graph, all of which come from this exhaustive data sheet published by P.L. Ward in 2009, which is easily accessible online. Now, for the sake of clarity, I only use data points that had both the time and the volume of ejected material. There are many other data points that don't have one of those or either of those. Now, according to actualistic and uniformitarian thinking, the size of volcanic eruptions, which in this chart is expressed in terms of extruded volcanic material, should average out over geologic time, producing an overall horizontal trend line. Now, yes, some volcanic events will be incredibly large and others will be equally small. But overall, volcanic eruption size should average out to produce a horizontal trend. And this, of course, is the major tenet of actualism. But this is not what we see. When a trend line is added to the data, we actually see an overall decrease in the size of volcanic eruptions. And this isn't an artifact imposed on the data by selectively sort of choosing a range. This general decrease in volcanic eruption size can be seen at every scale. Here is the same data over the last 200 million years. Notice that the trend line is decreasing. Here is the data over the past 70 million years, 10 million years, 2 million years, 500,000 years, 100,000 years, and 10,000 years. Notice that in each case, the trend line is always decreasing. Now this general trend is also true for the effusive eruptions associated with large igneous provinces, or LIPs, where huge tracts of land are covered in so-called flood basalts. Now this decrease in volcanic eruption size, it's not trivial. Eruption volumes during this period, for example, were about 10 times larger than those that have occurred in the last 100,000 years. Now, these data could be skewed because we only have three data points for the Paleozoic. We do, however, have many, many more data points for both the Mesozoic and the Cenozoic, where the average eruption for the Mesozoic was 4,000 times greater than for the eruption volumes of the past 100,000 years. But wait, there's more. Uh, not only do volcanic eruptions uh, get smaller over time, it also turns out that they become more frequent, much more frequent. In this bar graph, you can clearly see that volcanic frequency is much more prevalent in the Cenozoic. Breaking the Cenozoic down into 10 million year blocks shows that there have been more volcanic eruptions in the last supposedly 5 million years than at any other time in Earth history combined. So what does all of this mean? Well, some might say that decreasing size of volcanic eruptions is associated with the cooling of the mantle. But the minor amount of heat lost from the mantle over the supposedly past 500 million years, it doesn't accord with such a dramatic decrease in volcano size. Others might correctly point out that most volcanic activity is actually associated with plate tectonics and subduction of plates at continental boundaries. So more than likely, this decrease in volcano size correlates in some way to plate tectonics, and this region here, for example, might signal the breakup of Pangaea. But that doesn't explain the absurd decrease in volcano size. Remember, according to uniformitarian principles, Earth's plates have always been moving about. What one should expect to see is a ladder-like increase and decrease in volcano size, but at the same time, one should also expect 
a general uniform or horizontal trend over geologic time. Now, some might invoke the so-called pull of the recent, whereby the geologic record gets sort of more obscure the farther back one goes in the distant past. And I guess this is possible. But keep in mind that geologists and paleontologists have been able to piece together vast ancient ecosystems using just bones and local rock assemblages. It would seem strange that even the smallest of volcanic eruptions, like for example uh, Mount St. Helens, would be completely erased from the geologic past. Uh, taking the geologic record at face value then, we are left with some rather powerful evidence of an absurdly non-uniform, catastrophic geologic past, and one that fits very well with the biblical account of a worldwide curse that changed the natural order of things, as well as a global flood, where we are told that all the fountains of the great deep burst forth on a single day. Well, uh, that brings me to the end of that section. Uh, I hope you got something out of that. I'm sure that there'll be lots of questions and I'll be quite happy to answer those questions. Uh, don't forget uh, that I have a website, uh, www.creationunfolding.com. Don't forget to subscribe uh, to the channel. There'll be more videos to come. And I have a book as well, uh, Creation Unfolding, A New Perspective on Ex Nihilo, where I look at a different kind of uh, special creationism uh, that has a very dynamic perspective. Okay, well, thank you, and we'll see you next time. Bye.